Well, hello there, welcome along. It is the Business Connections Live Christmas party. We're live on the air at the moment, and can we wish you a very, very Merry Christmas. With me today, I've got Linda Bazan. Hello, Lynn. Hello, Steve. This is very exciting, isn't it, having all these different people here? We've got a ton of guests with us, haven't We've we? We've got more than we actually expected, and so many people have turned up that we weren't expecting, and it's just a fantastic atmosphere out there in the main area. I think the thing that's really nice about this is that we have a, a different guest every week who comes in and sort of shares their shares their knowledge with with you the audience but you know really what's nice about it is that we've got a whole load we've got a whole load of experts with us here uh, today at Business Connections Live. I tell you what, let's pop out into reception where the drinks and festivities are actually going on at the moment. Should we head out that Enjoy way? Enjoy and toast yourselves too. Yeah, all right then let's uh, make our way make our way out there then all right then. <laughs> Come. So here we are, we're outside, and this is the main reception area, and we've got all sorts of different uh, guests that we've got here. Oh, look, there's Jim on this camera. We'll have a look at Jim, shall we? There we are. Hello there. Lovely. This is, this is our Jim cam right now. The lovely Nikki Creel is the first of our guests that I'm uh, meeting up with, of course, a social media expert. Nikki, how are you? I'm fine. Thank you very much for inviting me here. Well, it's lovely to have you with us as well. Now, now it's an exciting time for social media at the moment. Yeah. Uh, we've seen an exciting year go by. Yes. What, what do you reckon is around the corner? Okay, change has, is happening at a, a more es escalated rate. And I think things have changed dramatically since the beginning of the year. I don't think anybody could have predicted how live live video streaming was going to work. And I know you've had somebody on with Periscope. That's Periscope right. Live. Nobody could have predicted that. Facebook have just announced that, that live streaming is open to everyone, which will have a major impact. But I think you have to be, as a small business owner, you have to be more clever about using it because it's becoming a lot more noisy so you can't just go in and have a Facebook account and think it's, it's, you're going to get a business from it you need to actually be a bit savvy about it so go on then give us your predictions for next year what's it going to be I think we're going to see a virtual reality come out of the work I'm pretty sure Facebook are going to launch something to do with virtual reality that's my prediction don't lie me the prediction is virtual reality listen have yourself a lovely time and do. a toast to you at Christmas as <laughs> well and get on the social media I'm busy tweeting as we are. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's, let's walk, we're going to walk this way over here. Um, Antonio Falco, lovely to have you with us. Now, we Steve. talked about to you about sales, didn't we? Yes, we did, yes. Uh, been a good year for sales, do you think? And is it going to get better next year? I think next year people really need to focus on getting their whole sales activity absolutely tied down. And as I've put in my new book that will be launched next year... Uh, I'll be plugging that. No, we're not what, plugging it, no. What's it called? Uh, Stop Pitching, Start Selling. Right. It, it is about focusing on getting the sales in. You know, it doesn't matter how great your product is, if nobody knows about it, if you haven't got a process for actually telling people and then asking for the order, it might be a tough year. Look, next year's going to be, I think, going to be a, a good year, but a, but a tough year. We're not out of the woods yet in terms of economy. Uh, in my role as uh, regional chairman for Surrey and West Sussex for the FSB, we know that members are still cautious. So they're optimistic but cautious, so I would counsel people to look at their sales plan for next year, because that's what's going to make the difference. Do you think a lot of companies start up these days and they, they, they kick off and they don't really think about uh, the sales that they should be doing? Is it Do they think about the product first, the marketing next, and, and they put, nearly leave sales on the back burner? I, I think that's a very fair comment. I would go further and say it probably doesn't even feature in the whole thinking. And so therefore what happens is they get to this point where they've done all the thought process of their product, they've done all the marketing, and then they arrive in front of a client and hope they're going to buy on the strength of the fact that they think the, that they think their product's great and they think their marketing's great. But actually, you've still got to make the exchange of your product or service for their money. And that is a skill and an art. And I would say to people, get on top of how that works. And what's the prediction, that one prediction for next year? What do you think it is? In terms of the economy? Well, and sales, and, you know, economy, sales, and what businesses should be doing. I, I think the economy is going to be, uh, as I've mentioned, I think it's still going to be tight. Uh, and in terms of sales, I'm bound to say, aren't I, Steve? Just, just if you don't know what you're doing, get, get some advice. All right, then. OK, you're watching Business Connections Live. It is our Christmas party. It's lovely to have you with us, uh, by the way. Now, we're just going to move over 
here because obviously uh, somebody that's very important when it comes to uh, your, your local economy is going to be your local chamber of commerce. Uh, with me I've got Louise Punter, she's just over here now. Louise, you're from the Surrey cha um, Chamber of Commerce, aren't you? I certainly am, yes. But, but, but across the country, I mean, regardless of where you are, just how important do you feel the different chambers are going to be for businesses in their local areas? Yeah, I mean, chambers are the one thing that stays constant in all of the areas. So they're really important to help businesses through whatever issues they might be facing. Um, we have a sort of network of 52 accredited chambers, and all of us work to a certain standard to make sure that we're really delivering what businesses need and listening to local businesses. And in fact, I work really closely with lots of those chambers to pick their brains, and believe it or not, they pick our brains as well so we share best practice. Are there any big initiatives that are going to take place next year do you think right across the country? Yeah. Well we didn't practice this but actually we've got a huge initiative happening uh, between January and March. We're running 250 careers events across the whole country. Um, in Surrey we're running seven or nine, we've probably run to nine actually, uh, where we're going into schools and we're bringing a whole 30 to 40 businesses, getting them to inspire the young people and trying to open their eyes to different uh, careers because there tends to be within the schools it tends to be quite narrow in the, the type of things that young people might do so we're finding all the weird and wonderful businesses that we can to come in and, and say you know how they got to be doing what they're doing and so then they'll inspire the young people one prediction for next year the economy's going to grow <laughs> the economy's going to grow you've heard it first here Louise lovely to see you thank you ever so much for joining us today um, uh, let's, uh, I'll, I'll back up a little bit. I'll just go over here uh, because we've got uh, loads of different uh, social media experts. We've also got uh, marketing expertise here as well. Uh, we'll kick off with the marketing expertise first of all. Uh, this is uh, Vanessa Lanham Day. Vanessa, you were on the program a little while back. Um, it's been an exciting year. Lots of companies are really beginning to realise that marketing is truly important for their business to make it grow and expand. What have you seen this year? What I'm really seeing is that the businesses that are successful are those who get themselves properly organised. You know, back in the, in the good old days, sort of pre-2008, probably customers did walk through the door to some degree, but now that people who are being successful, people are being really savvy, who are thinking it through, getting organised and getting a plan, and, and there certainly is people out there spending money, but you've got to work a lot harder to get it. So the people who are sitting there just expecting it will happen by magic, they're failing, but the people who are getting really organised um, are doing quite well. Now you're doing a lot of marketing for a lot of different uh, businesses right across both from social media through to traditional marketing and online marketing uh, and you are a big advocate of the sales funnel aren't you uh, is that it's a number of different ways to get customers to come to you and then to ex uh, exploits the wrong word but then to develop them and to grow with them and to, to get to know them to have a relationship so, but relationships are absolutely key in all of this because what people often look at they want the money they go how can we get direct to sale well, most businesses they will, they'll have a tribe of a relatively small number of people who become really loyal customers and they will buy and buy again if you create relationships with them but people often forget that and look for what they think is the easy money and forget that the relationships is what keeps people loyal and keep them spending more for longer uh, it's a really savvy marketing strategy one big prediction for next year um, i think I think we'll see a lot more uh, people understanding the power of things like online advertising, Facebook, I, I, we, we spoke about that earlier in the year, I think will explode, that they've had some interesting new developments this year, and I think it makes it really, really relevant for just about every business. I think if, if businesses haven't explored Facebook, they're almost certainly missing a trick. All right, well listen, thank you very much, and a very happy new year, and a Merry Christmas to you. Uh, standing next to me, I've got Phil Skinner. Me and Phil go back a long way, uh, celebrated my 60th uh, last Wednesday, and you're celebrating yours when? January, next month. Yeah, my Four weeks, I know. Four weeks away. <laughs> you're, you're, an, you're an accountant. I am. Uh, what, what are the key things that businesses need to be aware of, do you think? Well, I think year? at the moment, really, that the key thing is this dam auto enrolment. You know, lots of small businesses are ignoring it, despite the fact there are adverts on the television. But even some of my clients, they haven't seen the advert, or they've chosen not to. You've really got to get this sorted out, buttoned up. Talk to your accountant, talk to your financial advisor, just 
just talk to somebody, it will not go away. We are going to reach a crescendo by the middle of 2017. There are hundreds of thousands of small businesses that haven't even started the process and they're going to run out of time. And lots of the um, insurance companies, some of the larger ones, they won't be interested in your business because there's not enough money in it for them. So really your only option will be go something like the Nest route. That's the government backed uh, if all else fails. Nothing wrong with the scheme. But, you know, so even if you've got just one employee, you've still got to get the scheme set up. It's a, the, I mean, the implications are far reaching. You know, you're hearing in the press about minimum wage. But the knock on effect, of course, if you've got 20,000 staff on minimum wage and they're coming and going, particularly in retail, absolute nightmare to manage. But you've now put your costs up dramatically because not only are they going to have to meet the minimum wage, perhaps nine, ten pounds an hour, but the, the pension cost that goes with it. It's so really the thing to do is to sort it out as quick as you can? As soon as you can, absolutely. I, I can't emphasise enough. It is a real worry, actually. I'm, we've had quite a stressful few months because we have a number of clients who were all to enrol from the 1st of January. And, you know, we've been battling away. Well, listen, I'm going to let you keep battling yeah, yeah, away. But thank listen, you. thank you very much indeed. Thank you, you are watching thank Business you. Connections Live. Yeah. And uh, we've got more from our guests in just a few moments' time. But before that, follow me back into the studio. We're going we're gonna to battle our way through. Just going to walk our way, Mark Hughes there and I recognize that Steve Bridger there and uh, just this come this way uh, we're back in the studio actually it's, it's quite it's quite calm in here at the moment which is uh, which is really quite nice to be honest with you uh, what I'm gonna do I'm I'm just gonna, Steve's moved away now I'm over here I just wanted to get these uh, to show these two I'm gonna put this microphone down for a moment now these are a really really clever idea uh, these ones here uh, I don't know if you come across this if you're trying to get your message out there at the moment to different organizations and to different companies and you're trying to look for something that's going to be a little bit unique we were just talking to Vanessa Lanham Day there just a moment or so ago and she was telling us it's all about marketing getting people to come in and making them interested well why not deliver your message in a completely different way uh, this may look like a matchbox to you Jim can you just come in nice and close on this and I, and I shall show this to you so, and so there we, let me just show you this. If I just pull that over like that, and just give it a few seconds, it's actually got a video that's playing inside of it. Now, there are a whole range of these, and they are so different for doing marketing. Let me just pop, pop that down and show you another one. Now, this is a really clever idea. Look at that. Really, really flat. You could get that through the post, couldn't you, in no time at all. And if I open the cabinet door here, you'll see that we've got a small video that's just sitting there and that kicks off and that explains what the product is all about. Now there's a complete range of these. The biggest problem that companies are going to have when they get something like this is what are you going to put inside of it? What's going to be the content that you're going to be doing? Now if you want to come and talk to us here at uh, Business Connections Live, we can advise you on the kind of content that you could be putting into something like this to make it a really good marketing tool for your small to medium scale enterprise, maybe for your business. You just want to get your message out to your, uh, to your investors. This could well be the way that you actually do that. There's a, a whole range of different sizes. I'll just uh, show you these here. If you want more details on, um, on these, why don't you get in touch with us here at Business Connections Live. Can we do all the, uh, the housekeeping? Is that going to be possible at all? Um, if you want to, you can email us at uh, studio at businessconnectionslive.com. There it is. It's on the screen right there as we speak. Also, for that matter as well, if you want to give us a call and talk to us about any of these, 01784 256 777. And if you want to follow us on Twitter, and don't forget we've got a hashtag going as well today, our uh, Twitter address is BCL uh, Business TV. And I think it's hashtag... Um, um, can't remember. I will come back to you on that one. Just to show you that we are live and we're broadcasting live from the studios uh, in the west of London. Okay, uh, this is the studio, by the way. Let me just show you around. Could, Jim, can we can we just show the studio off a little bit? Can we just show the lights and all the rest of it? So this is what this is what Business Connections Live is all about. Properly built studio uh, with all the facilities, everything that you need to do great business uh, television. All right, let's get back outside to our guests. You're watching Business Connections Live, and it is our Christmas party today. We're going back outside uh, to our guests. Uh, the first big chap that we're going to meet here, and I'll get the camera around so we can see it. 
There you go. Hello there. Hello. It's Mark Hughes. Now, Mark, you, you, you do a whole range of different things. You were on the, what, some of the early programmes. Yeah. But, of course, I mean, I suppose it's, it's all about using Facebook for marketing, isn't it? It's, well, it's Facebook. It's really online marketing. So any of the disciplines um, to do with getting your business leverage and reach on the internet. Is, is Facebook the, the new kid on the block, effectively? Is that, I know it's been there for a long time, and people have used it socially, but has Facebook now sort of moved on a step? I think Facebook have definitely, I mean, they've evolved, and they've started to add a lot more inputs and weight to video. They, you know, they're now talking about having a separate uh, stream just for video, because it's essentially they're catching up to YouTube in terms of how many videos are streaming. I mean, it's going to be very competitive between the two, isn't it? Absolutely. I think they're all competing with each other for, for their dominance in terms of of leverage of um, you know their different advertising platforms as well uh, I just seen just in the last six months how much Facebook advertising in the back office in terms of what they offer uh, in the different ways that you can advertise I mean before you used to be able to advertise only on Facebook now I mean you can advertise off of Facebook all you want so yeah. you can drive people to your website pages everything now. the question a lot of people ask is it suitable for all businesses Facebook to have a business page on Facebook is that going to be right for regardless of the business you're in? It's a simple it's a simple question and a simple answer is yes if your target market is on Facebook. So that's where it starts. Know who your target audience is. If they're on that platform, use traffic to get your, your offers and your content in front of them. All right, very quickly, prediction for next year is? Pay to play. Pay to play. Pay to play simply means that you can't afford to just try the free options of trying to get social media to work for you. You need to buy traffic to get the results to get the leverage it's got to be done you've got to buy traffic you heard it from the man himself first you've got to buy traffic to make it actually work for you um, you may have noticed earlier on there was a reindeer that joined us uh, let me get this hang on there we are uh, this is uh, Steve Bridger well-known author and entrepreneur <laughs> And uh, I've just had somebody just said in my ear, go back to the reindeer. <laughs> yeah, go back to the reindeer. Be the reindeer, I know. I know. Uh, Don't worry, I will. Transform your communication skills. Yes. The book's great. Yes. We're in the book. You're in the book. But the thing that's important about the book is the fact that there are people out there that don't really understand what communication skills they need in business. Well, it's, it's just not business, but that's, I mean, it's communication skills of the basic, basic kind we're talking about here, which is, good, which is whoever you are, if you're nervous about standing up in public and speaking, it will help you do that. But also, if you're not very good at writing or you're good at something, but writing's not so good, then that, there's something in there for you. It's, it's, and there's also, by the way, there's a chapter in there about standing up and giving a, a wedding speech. You know, so it's for, just like for normal people who want to improve their, improve their skills. But actually, that's not what it's about at all. What it's really about is giving people confidence in their own ability to improve their self-esteem so that they start to feel good about themselves. And of course, if you're better at communicating in the, in, you know, in the business environment, that means that people can comprehend what you're doing better, everybody can understand what you're doing better, the decision-making is better, and hopefully the success that flows from that is also you know, a great improvement on what you've had before. Now, one of the most important things you told me last time was brevity so we'll go for, <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll go for brevity right now your one prediction for next year right uh, well what I want to do next year is make sure people be utterly totally selfish for themselves and think about their own talents their own abilities and think about how they can move themselves forward both both in business and in their personal lives fantastic Steve Bridger it's been an absolute pleasure yeah, thank you very thank much you. for being part thank of the, uh, the program during the year cheers okay. um, just just come this way over here Steve can I just jump in a second Yes, yes. Just, just, a, just brevity. If you're going to buy a communications book over Christmas and read it, this is the one to read. Oh, oh, it's all right. Let's, let's, no, let's give it the plug. You see, we, it plug. I'm embarrassed. You should always have your book. Transform your uh, business skills. Available now on Amazon. Yeah. And where else? Uh, Smith's. It's on online on Smith's, Amazon's, and uh, uh, Waterstones, of course. Brilliant. There you go. Fantastic book. Really, very, re very interesting. Uh, just moving over here now, we've got another social media expert. This is uh, David Endersby here. Uh, remind us of the company. 
TW18 Business Media. That's, it's interesting talking to other people about what's going on at the moment when it comes to social media. What, what are the big changes do you feel? Uh, Mark's just mentioned about um, um, Facebook and more video and corporates using more Facebook I, I video. I think they're now the things, uh, vid video is going to be really big next year, I think. Um, things like Periscope with um, li live streaming is going to be a fantastic resource for the right business. Or if you're doing events or doing networking events, then having being able to do Periscope is going to be there. I think for the smaller local business, then they really do. I think someone's already mentioned it, but you've got to look at Facebook ads um, because you can get good returns. You can find a very well-defined audience who are pertinent to what you do, and it won't break the bank. I did a campaign a bit plug -in for somebody recently. He spent £25. He, he runs a gym. He got 20 new people through the door on Black Friday. So that's 20 potential people who could be signing up to be members there. And so that cost him £25 to do. So, like it all, it's finding find where your audience is and engage with them. But the, the things that are going to come up are, as people said, Facebook advertising, Periscope, you know, the live streaming and, and videos are going right. to be big. I well, Dave, thank you very much for pleasure. coming and joining us today. Uh, the one big prediction? There's uh, one, one sentence. Uh, uh, Periscope. There you go. Again, Periscope, Periscope is I mean, we did a program on Periscope a little while back, absolutely fascinating area as well. So if you are looking at maybe getting out there and getting your your awareness up, maybe Periscope, Periscope is going to be the way you do it. A very Merry Christmas to you. Thank now, you. over here, Lady in Red. Lady in Red. Okay. All right, take a breath, Phil. Okay. And uh, this, is, <laughs> this is Sophie Wilson. She's from PHA, big agency uptown. Yes. Sophie, lovely to have you with us today. Lovely to be here. All these businesses that are here and we're, that we're talking to, tell me, what, what are the key things that they need to be remembering when it comes to using PR and press to promote their businesses? Okay, well I think that promotion is obviously absolutely key because you can have a great product, you can have a great business, but that really doesn't mean anything unless you're telling the world about it. And at PHA Media, that's what we do. We help clients of all different sizes, whether it's entrepreneurs and individuals, whether that's SMEs or corporates or big consumer clients, we help them to spread their message in the right way for them, whether that's mainstream media, digital marketing, social media, um, and of course, you know, the do, do you have to be of a, of a particular size? I mean, can, can do sm small SMEs, small business owners, can they still get the power, harness the power of an agency like yours? Absolutely, and in fact, many, many of our clients are SMEs and individuals. We have a particular specialism in working with small businesses, tech startups, entrepreneurs. So, yes, it's available to all, I think, as long as you um, you engage with an agency and you work with us, we can help you to come. And initially, can you do it yourself a bit? Now, we had this conversation before, no. and the answer's no, isn't it? <laughs> I'll be frank, I'll be frank. We work with the tenacity of a newsroom. We've got a 65-strong agency, industry experts, former journalists. We were founded by um, a newspaper, former newspaper editor. So we have got a little back foot bursting full of contacts. And frankly, you cannot replicate that atmosphere, that energy. We are in very early in the morning. We're all over the broadcast agenda. Commissioners, editors, they're ringing us up and asking us for stories. That is something that as an individual you just could not possibly do on your own. I know people try, but it's absolutely not what we would advocate. Well, she would say that, wouldn't she? <laughs> but, but thank you very much, and it is interesting. If you, I mean, all our guests, there's contact details for all of them on our website if you want to find out more about what they do and what they can offer as well. But for small businesses, you do need to get out there. There's no point in being a world-kept secret. You do need to tell the world, be it on Facebook, be it social media, and also when it comes to the likes of Press and PR. Fantastic. Listen, let's move on. Let's find ourselves a mentor, shall we? We've got a mentor here. Thanks, Sophie. Here's our mentor. This is the lovely Chelsea Baker. The lovely Chelsea Baker, who for a long time, actually, you know, just for a moment, my, main, my mind went completely blank. But Chelsea, an established, a long established mentor now for businesses up and down the country, a, a very successful businesswoman in your own right, launched your own TV channel. You, you've just launched a brand new initiative as well, haven't you? I have, Steve, yes. I launched National Mentoring Day. So on the 27th of October, it was a huge success. Success. The nation has a new business day and of course it's going to be going ahead on the 27th of October 2016. 
So we're really encouraging everybody to, you know, seek support from a mentor, you know, certainly for the new year ahead, because I find that so many businesses are struggling on their own, whereas if they actually took the advice, you know, and, and sought uh, the experience that a mentor has to bring, they can really progress their company and they don't have to suffer in silence. What, what can people expect from a mentor? What are the key things that people are going to get out of it? It's really having that accountability partner, somebody to bounce ideas off of. And I think, you know, certainly with myself, people see, you know, come to me a lot because of my, uh, my, my history in journalism, in PR and marketing. So I help to take brands, you know, into the national newspapers to create that story for them and to help with increasing their profits and sales. I think with a lot of young entrepreneurs and with a lot of SMEs, they are really just clutching at straws. They're just trying to do everything. Whereas the experience that a mentor has, we can actually showcase, you know, and show you the way for additional revenue streams, show you a path that maybe you you haven't really thought of. So it's really quite a critical uh, time for, for a lot of businesses. And uh, we need to make sure that going forward for the new year, that businesses have that right support and, and guidance from somebody who's already been there. Fantastic. Well, listen, the very best of luck for you and very best of luck as well for the, the mentoring day, which is a, a fantastic idea, a fantastic initiative. And we hope to get you back in the studio again in the very near future because the shows are always really interesting. And I don't think people understand how important that mentoring is to have somebody that you can talk to. Exactly. Yep, definitely. Thank you, Steve. No, 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 Chelsea, that's fantastic. All right, Jim, head towards the studio. That's where we're going. Uh, you are watching Business Connections live, and it's great to have your company with us today. Uh, we'll, we'll pop back into the studio again. There we are, uh, where it's a little bit cooler, in fact. Oh, Jim's making it. There you go. All right, well, we hope you're enjoying today's show. It is absolutely fantastic. You're watching Business Connections Live TV. More in just a moment. Wow, what a show it's been so far. It has been absolutely incredible. Where should we go to next? That's the big question. I'll tell you what, this show has been brought to you today by TubeBuddy, our good friends at TubeBuddy. Just have a little look at this and some of the feature, features that TubeBuddy can actually bring to your business. If you want to get out there and you actually want to be able to uh, promote your business online and you're using YouTube to do it, then you need to get hold of TubeBuddy. Have a look at this. on there as well for that matter and uh, you can see here you've got advanced video editing annotation templates all these are features within the program you've got video SEO tools there as well uh, to check out your search ranking you've even got promotion tools uh, to promote your individual videos so you put up on YouTube and you get some fantastic analytics as well for that matter it's a terrific terrific suite of programs you import it into uh, your Chrome browser very straightforward very very easy you use it from your browser and then it attaches itself to your YouTube channel when you're using it if you want more details on this all you've got to do is go along to tubebuddy.com and you can find out more about this amazing this amazing piece of software uh, that's available to download onto your PC and to actually use and if you go to the Business Connections Live website you can also get a discount on your subscription to it too and our thanks to all the guys at uh, TubeBuddy for helping us with uh, today's program you're watching Business Connections Live. Steve Harlan with you here. Boy, a, a whole room full of guests. Can we just see the guests from our uh, camera number two? There they are. There's all the guests. They're all in there. They're having a bit of a drink at the moment. We're going to go out in just a few moments' time, and we'll, and we'll try and have another chat. Who should we go to now? Have you ever thought about being um, an exec? I'm over here now. An exec. There we go. An exec director. Is that something that uh, has maybe fascinated you in the past? Come with me. And we'll have a word of down here. Now, uh, we've got a real threesome that is standing around here at the moment. This is Martin Hawley. Martin, I was just sort of mentioning about uh, non-exec directors. For those people that don't really get this or understand it, just tell us a little bit about why that's a really good idea for people to consider. Well, non-exec non directors can give a, uh, a great external perspective to your business. So if you get a non-exec that's independent and objective, they can come into your business and really help you uh, work out your strategy and how you execute that strategy and work out some of the problems. And they change the dynamic of your board as well. So I think 
there's a lot of good that they can do. They shake things up a little bit, but in a nice way, in a, in a friendly way, and they challenge you in a friendly way as well. So the larger businesses use their non-execs to great effect, and they help them grow their business, scale up their business, it, and it all comes down to the decisions that the boards are making. Is it difficult? Do you, what, what's the criteria? Is it just experience, or do you need a, a sheet on your CV that is just full of qualifications and businesses? I think um, uh, uh, the market that we work in, we're looking for non-execs uh, to help companies who are sort of small to low medium-sized businesses. So that's sort of one to sort of five, six, seven million pound turnover. And it might be the their first time experience for non-exec. And what we're saying is don't don't take somebody who might be the stereotype non-exec, the retired bank manager or uh, corporate sort of person. Get somebody actually from uh, a, sim a, co a company that might be a similar size, that might be like a stage of further development. Uh, somebody is actually a working executive and can really understand where your company is coming from and what's affordable and what's not affordable. So that can kind of hone the decision making into a real world practicality for your own business. Well, listen, Martin, thank you very much. Big prediction for next year is going to be what? Um, well, the economy is growing, so I think next year, um, be optimistic would be the thing I would say, actually. The economy is growing, get out there, look at your productivity, look at your markets, uh, look at your strategy, and be optimistic and grow. In and out of Europe, in or out? I, I favour... Simple answer, in or out, you're not a politician. In, in. 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 follow me, Dutch. Okay, I'm not a politician. <laughs> listen, no, you're fantastic. Thank you very much indeed. Okay. And, um, and thank you very much for all your help through the year as well. It's been fantastic. Thank you. Uh, another man here. These two. Come round here, Jim. Sorry, Jim. I'll be back with you shortly. Yeah. Andrew Weaver here from Lawyer Fair. Looking for a lawyer? Then you need to talk to Andrew Weaver. Or at least your, your website. Now, you came on and you talked about setting up the business, but you also came on and you were talking about seed funding as well. I did. I got two invites. Were you short of a guest the second time? No, we weren't, we weren't short of a guest at all, but, but the seed funding thing got a lot of response to that. A lot of people found it really interesting. So, you know, you, you went through that stage of funding. When you look back at it, what did you learn from it, do you think? Well, I think, uh, as I probably said at the time, uh, it was about timing. I underestimated the timing, the amount of time that it takes. And of course, the great challenge with raising a seed fund is it's often with a business like ours, where there are only two or three key players. If one of those people is out raising funding, that means the business is affected. So it's a, it can be terribly distracting. And so you kind of have to work almost 80 or 90 hours a week just to keep everything uh, ship shape because the last thing that you want to happen is that the investor sees the business was beginning to slip. So the, the great challenge was, was keeping everything together, not being distracted, and giving yourself enough time. And what about the business itself, uh, Lawyer Fair? What, what's happening there? It's going, going great guns. I mean, we, we've had a phenomenal year. We made, the, we made the final of a national business competition, the pitch, uh, in November. We lost. I, I'm not sure why. But there was some FIFA jiggery poetry going on in the background, but we enjoyed it very much. Uh, so that was fantastic. The Seed Fund allowed us to grow our team, allowed us to have a much deeper marketing reach, and it's been going. I think, uh, I think gangbusters is a technical phrase for it, Steve. Okay, well listen, thank you ever so much indeed. Thanks, Steve. It's been lovely talking to you and a very, a very happy new year. Now we seem to be having a little bit of trouble with the sound. Is it this mic or my mic? Oh. All right then, I tell you what, I hope you're enjoying today's programme. We're having a lot of fun. It's very noisy actually in the environment that we're in here. Uh, but hi me, now these are two well known. Come, come this way you guys. Uh, Benjamin Dennehy. Is, 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 have I got the name right this time? Oh, Dennehy, is it an yes. e Dennehy, I've Dennehy. got that bit right. Yes. Uh, the, um, the number two motivational speaker. Second best motivational speaker in the UK, probably the world. It, <laughs> that's a big claim. It is a big claim. A big claim. Know, so. Now, tell us a little bit about, people that don't understand what Sandra is all about, yeah. if you had to encapsulate it in a minute, what's Sandra? Sandra turns everything you know about selling upside down. It makes you realise that it's all your own fault, that selling has got nothing to do with you, the salesman, but it's all about the prospect, that your ego is your biggest enemy, and most salespeople are ego-driven. Um, so if your foot's hurting, you're probably standing on it. So that's one of our rules. So we teach people the exact opposite of everything we know about selling. It's painful, it's brutal, it's brilliant. So then, if you, and, I, and you're the only person I've said this to, if you had to give us three key pieces of advice then for 2016 that would um, improve our selling technique, what would it be? One, be your own friend. If someone talked to you the way you talk to yourself, you'd probably punch them in the face. <laughs> <laughs> Fact right. of life, you've got to be your own friend in sales, because if everyone out there wants you to fail or doesn't want you to succeed or is hoping in 
somewhere that you want to get through. Be your own best friend. So don't criticise yourself. If you screw up, you screw up. Big deal. Move on. Second one. Remember that selling is not about you. It's all about the prospect. Why do we hate salespeople? Because they're selfish. They come across as selfish. You know when they walk into the room, they're after your money. Trying to be genuinely sincere in your prospect and figure out if you can help them is the key to selling. Because this isn't about selling. It's about building a relationship where you can actually help someone. And number three? And number three. Every prospect lies all of the time. They so don't mean to. They don't mean to. They just do. But they just do. Because <laughs> you are all taught never to trust the salesman. So if somebody says to you they're the decision maker, qualify that. What do you mean you're the decision maker? You mean you're not going to ask anybody else any advice over making this decision? Oh, yeah, I'll probably run it by the FD. Hmm. Don't you think it'd be a good idea if he's involved when I do the presentation? <laughs> so, remember they lie all the time. Not because they're mean and nasty, but because you've been raised never to trust the salesman. All right, listen, very happy new year to you. Thank you very happy much. Standing next to you, you've got Steve Nichols. Right. Lovely to see you right. there. Now, this is a ma now because of you, yes. it had to be done. Ah, you've got yourself a, 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 a well-known well Apple Watch. Yeah, very, very we nice. both got them now. Yes, very so nice. we're, we're part of the we're part of the, part club. Of the club. You you you've been yeah we have now been assimilated, haven't we? <laughs> when, when you look back at the way technology has, has influenced uh, business over the last 12 months, I mean, yeah. what's a big highlight for you? I think video. I mean, the, the business that you're in, video, is is something which was one is is growing, but is growing exponentially. So I think if you look at something like YouTube um, and also the live streaming, so things like Periscope, Meerkat, that kind of stuff, where it, it basically makes one of these uh, a mobile TV station. So it means that if there's a news item that people can actually take their phone out and actually capture it live. And that is changing the way people are doing uh, news, but it's also changing the way people are doing business. So I think that um, video is, the, is one of the key ones, let's say live streaming, um, and also collaboration. I think these are uh, collaboration tools, things like um, Slack. Slack is a new tool and it basically brings all of your things together, email, attachments, and various. so when, if you're a new person joining a company, normally you'll just get a blank email and go and look at the internet. Or, or if you're a small company, you don't even probably have an internet, so it'll be go to a shared drive. Um, something like Slack, I would say for small businesses and large businesses alike, something well worth going to have a look at. Collaboration tools. And uh, so th they're the things we're looking out for for next year as yeah, well? I'd say so. So video, um, live streaming, so try out these things like Periscope and things like that. Um, try out Slack. I think those are really good applications. And I think before when I've been on your Slack, <laughs> Slack yes, it's an app on your phone. Try it out. It's, it's well worth it. It's, um, I, I think the other thing is that I've talked before is that um, I may not have said it before, but uh, I think next year, one of the things to look out for. It's not going to hit business yet, but it's something which I think is probably the the Motorola brick. Do you remember the first mobile phone to come out? It was the Motorola brick, and now we're now we've got smart watches and phones. Um, in the first quarter of next year, the Oculus Rift is coming out. It's owned by Facebook, and it was a guy called Palmer Lucky who came up with this virtual reality headset. I think they've been working for about 18 months now on that with the developer community, and it's going to go into the gaming area first. And what's it called? It's called the Oculus Rift, and it's virtual reality, and I guarantee that that is the thing over the next five to ten years is going to revolutionise business. It's going to be the new platform for the future. We'll Not next year, but it's going to be it's there. It's going to be there. Yeah. Listen, Steve, it's been lovely, and thank you very much for all the time you spent with us this year. Happy Christmas. And a happy Merry Christmas to you. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to come over this lady over here right now. You're watching Business Connectors Live. Great to have your company. And um, down here is uh, Kate Cook. We thought you were standing up. There we go. Kate, we've, we've got two minutes. Yes. For those people that don't know, why is nutrition in business so important? Well, I think nutrition can seriously improve the bottom line of your business and make the staff perform at their absolute best as they're destined to do and should do. Absolutely. So I work with some very big and uh, companies who take nutrition and the strategy of nutrition very importantly, and um, you know it makes a huge difference. I mean, a lot in the construction industry that really see that safety is a really critical issue and that nutrition can play a very important part in that. What's the big problem, do you think? Is it the fact that we're more desk-bound these days? We don't sit there, it's very, we're very docile. We just sit and play with mice all the time, uh, hardly ever getting up. Yeah, well, actually, the studies, they show it's uh, the, the reverse, which is that the nutrition leads the exercise. So what it is, is when, when you're not getting the right nutrition, it makes you actually, if you like, lazier to, in order to get up from the desk. So it's not the exercise leading the nutrition.
nutrition. It's the nutrition leading the exercise. But I think it's actually just that we've lost, even in a generation, the importance of sitting down and sharing food in the proper normal way and seeing it as central to our well-being and being human beings. It's actually a, a, an incredibly part of, of being human is, is what we eat. And we're losing that education and we're losing what it is to eat properly for optimum energy. One piece of advice, very quickly, one piece of advice for everybody after the New Year celebrations, it is? It is eat as a family and get your boundaries at work in order so that you can do that and become a human being, not a human doing. A human being, not a human doing. That's from the mouth itself. That's Kate Cook. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, you're watching Business Connectors Live. More in just a moment. Well, wow. I mean, it's great. I mean, so far we've got around nearly, uh, nearly everybody that's actually here at the event, which is fantastic. Got a few more people to talk to. Uh, but if you're watching something like this, just imagine how engaging this is. If you're sending out newsletters at the moment, you're probably finding or thinking to yourself, do people even bother to open them? Do they actually read them? Well, do they? That's the big question. How would you like to engage your audience? Steve Nichols was talking a moment or so ago that it's all about engaging your audience. Uh, we heard from Mark a little while back where he's saying that now video on Facebook is going to be the next big thing. The trouble is, and this is where I come in, I think, is that that content that you put up there is going to be judged side by side to everybody else. Some people are going to be spending thousands, some people are going to be spending millions to get their message over. And the thing about our audiences is they do not put up at second class material. Yes, they will watch a 30 second video about a cuddly cat, but what they won't do is watch something about your business that is amateurish and second rate. You need to do it professionally, you need to do it properly. And that's why we put together this. It's called Your Brand TV. Still sending out conventional newsletters to customers? Do you just want a more engaging way to talk to your customers and employees? Hello, I'm Steve Hyland. And I'm Linda Bazant of Business Connections Live. Your Brand TV is a completely branded television show that can be streamed live or delivered on demand to your niche audience. Be the first in your market to capitalize on the online media gold rush that is using online video to effectively deliver news, information and education to key personnel and clients. Video attracts two to three times as many monthly visitors. It doubles their time spent on your site and has a 150% increase in organic traffic from search engines. Large networking organizations are already utilizing the power of Your Brand TV to market, promote and publicize to their members and groups across the UK. Your program will be branded with your corporate colors and logos in your own broadcast quality network studio. You can choose the format. It can be news or magazine or interview in its look and feel. You can have live guests on your show or you can Skype them in. You can stream the show live or on demand so it's available for catch up. This is a chance to deliver your message in a new exciting format that will allow your business to cut through the noise and stand out from the crowd and engage your workforce and customers. This is Your Brand TV. To get more information on this fabulous opportunity to bring to life your corporate communications, contact us today at Business Connections Live, the UK's leading online business channel. There we go. We're on this one over here. We'll, well, can we have a look at Jim Cam for a second? Just so it shows the studio a little bit. There we are. This is uh, the full studio here, in fact. Uh, normally, we use a virtual set, actually, in our studio. So if you are a multinational, if you are an SME, if you're a corporate, and you're looking to produce quality content for your business, then what we can do is that we can brand a studio like this, and all we can use uh, virtual reality. We can do all of that, and we can bring your business alive for your audience. So stop your viewers or the people that you send out your emails to stop them from being readers turn them into viewers engage them in 2016.
You're watching Business Connections Live. Steve Harley with you here. I'll just leave the old tree behind. Uh, one more person that we're going to talk to, and it's interesting because he found, he discovered that he was going to be using uh, video uh, this year. Jimmy Jacobson is his name, and uh, he's from a company called Online Dynamics. Uh, just come back from a big sales trip in Barcelona, isn't it, Jimmy? Yes, that was very exciting. We just uh, launched a new brand, uh, Online Dynamics support, and uh, went to Barcelona to, um, to kick it off. And that was um, very exciting. We got a, a lot of people who were very interested, both uh, in, uh, in the partner model that we didn't have at that time, but we found out very quickly that we had to establish a partner model. Um, and, and clients, uh, uh, international clients, uh, who really wants to use the software that we, we, we launched. Now, now, you're a bit of an entrepreneur on the quiet, aren't you? Because this is just one of many companies. What do you think it is? What, what does it take to be entrepreneurial, do you feel? It's, it's a very good question. I've been giving that a lot of thought. I think essentially it's, it's about not being scared. It's about uh, having an idea, speaking to people about it, making a story out of it and getting their feedback. And then don't be scared about taking the next step. Uh, I established my first business when I was 18 years old as, a, as an accountant. I didn't have the education behind me. I just thought I'd like to, to count other people's money and help them out doing accounting, accountancy. So that's how I started business uh, first time. And I just kept on doing that since. I mean, sitting in the room that we've got here today, we've got people that will do everything from communications through the funding, through accountancy. We've got, got one of those here as well to press and PR. If you had a look at what you do within your business, what's the most important bit that you feel? I think it's helping businesses becoming more efficient with what they're doing today. It's optimizing their processes, being more competitive, uh, doing better things for their employees by analyzing how your employees uh, are behaving in certain situations. So it's, it's, it's effectively making us better at what we are we're doing, producing things much more efficient and better. Well, this has been a pleasure talking to you. It's been a pleasure working with you through the year as well. Um, if you want to find out more, the, the, the actual system that you talk about is it's online dynamic support so it's Microsoft Microsoft online dynamic support get get instant help with uh, Microsoft dynamics when you need it fantastic uh, Jimmy Jacobson there now yet yeah, we, we didn't forget you I'm gonna move out of the way so I can get to Steve, I never believed that you would forget me. We, we would never do that. How are you How are you keeping? I'm very well indeed. How are you? I'm very well. This is Jim McLaughlin from um, Axial. Hi. And um, really, I mean, you've been on the program. You've talked about a number of different things. You've talked about sales. And we were talking earlier on to uh, Benjamin about the Sander technique. You, you are a traditional sales guy, aren't you? Your, your features, your benefits. But you're, you're really being on talking the customer's language, Absolutely. aren't you? Absolutely. Absolutely. Talking the customer's language. And although I'm a traditional sales guy, that really means also beginning to integrate a lot of the new aspects of marketing that go under the banner of digital marketing but really just another they're just an, an evolution of how do I get the right message and how do I find the right channel to deliver it to the appropriate people at the right time and in the right way do you, do you think a lot of people and I've said this a few times maybe on the program as well do you think a lot of people actually skip that part of it they don't see the importance of getting that right I think the, the communication part escapes many many people so lots of our companies are technology companies, and the, particularly technology people kind of brilliant products um, that, that do lots of very, very good things. But they forget that if other people aren't using those products, they're really of no use to anyone. And the only way that you can get people to, 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 uh, to buy any new, any new product or any new service is to communicate to them appropriately so that they can see the benefit that you want to offer. It doesn't matter how good it is, if somebody doesn't understand what the benefits are, they're not going to be interested in, in talking about it far less by Just hang on one second there, we understand we're having a few sound problems. Is that true? A few sound problems there at the moment. Uh, I think what we'll do, we're just going to plug this in. Just back into the studio there for a second. Don't, don't go away, Jim. Uh, stay there for a second. I'm just going to um, undo this and um, we'll come up on... And you should be getting me now on the wired microphone. Thank you very much. Can you hear that? Lovely. Is that working now? It seems to be working now. That's what we'll go back. We'll go back to Jim. Jim. 
I'm, I'm on a piece of wire now, which is, which is always good. So, so, yeah, you can be on that side now. We, we, we can swap sides. So, so where were we? Where were we? Just in the middle there. Uh, we were talking about um, the importance of communicating the right message in the right way. And I was just saying that that means, although you, you, you refer to me as someone who's a traditional marketing person, um, essentially what I was saying is what traditional marketing is evolving with the use of all the different kinds of social media channels. So that there's now an area called digital marketing. But fundamentally, it's the same thing. It's about articulating the right message for the right people and getting it to them in a way that makes sense to them. When you go out there and you're talking to businesses, do you think they actually understand what you're trying to get over this, the whole digital marketing thing? Is everybody, they, they think one thing, but they do something different? And I, and, and I guess that I would, I, I would paraphrase that slightly. I don't think it's businesses, I think it's individuals, because we're always talking to individuals within the, in businesses. Some individuals understand the importance of communication and they understand the nuances of communication and many don't. So particular, well, in any in any aspect of business, whether we're talking finance, IT, sales, marketing, lots of people are really very good at a particular skill, but they're not necessarily good communicators. And I speak as someone who has spent a lifetime working in sales and marketing and now working very closely with sales and marketing people for our client organisations. And frequently I'm quite surprised at how poor communicators people are, even if they're involved in an area that is all about communication, such as sales and marketing. I did, you know, I've, I've worked for radio stations and TV channels, and they are probably the worst communicators in the whole world, aren't you? Yes, you are. You are. But it's very interesting, that, isn't it? Well, listen. Um, your, your prediction then for next year is going to be what? I think next year is going to be a better year for business. I think that we're going to continue to see in the area of sales and marketing, we're going to continue to see very significant developments as new technologies influence the sales and marketing of traditional organisations, as new business models like the sharing business models of people like Uber begin to filter down into other businesses and other, other areas. That, that disruptive app. Those that, are, yeah. that, that, that disruptive technology is not just going to affect people like 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 taxi companies that's through the different layers of the marketplace so that small and medium-sized businesses as well as large businesses are going to be are going to be greatly affected but you know, I think the overall picture is a positive one we're going to see growth next year we're going to see many businesses doing doing better than they have done over the last few years and hopefully that means that they'll have more money to spend on sales and marketing <laughs> And that's what we want to hear, isn't it? That's what we, that's that's what we want to hear. Certainly, that's what I want to hear. Well, listen, I, I tell you what, it's been absolutely fantastic. Please go and enjoy yourself <laughs> there. Um, out there. I'm just going to call Linda over. Well, Linda, if you can just come over. We'll, we'll stroll back into the studio again. Mind the cables there, Jim. You're walking backwards. And I know there's nobody there at the moment. Good old Jim. Uh, joining me once again in the studio, we've got uh, Linda. Linda Bazan's going to join me. And um, Lynn. It's been, it's, I can't wait to get one of those. It's been, I'm yeah. um, okay. It's been an interesting, an interesting hour. We're nearly at the end of it, last couple of minutes. From the people that are out there, I mean, it's been a bit like a networking event because these are old friends nearly, aren't they, that, that are out there. What do you think sort of come out of the day? The nice thing for us is they're old friends to us, but an awful lot of those people haven't met each other before. And the amount of business that's being done out there while the program program has been going out live is phenomenal. So, do you think that, that networking really still does have a place out there? I mean, this has been, to all intents and purposes, like a networking event, hasn't it? It has, and people buy it from people. It's all very well sending out newsletters and emails and so on and doing a cold calling. You need to get in a room with people because you don't know who knows someone that is going to be useful to your business. All right then, so what do you reckon next year holds for us? I mean, we've given all the predictions. Business Connections Live, where uh, over 150 hours of content is sitting there online. We've done shows. Uh, what do you think it, next year holds for us? Is there a change in gear? Do you think that, I mean, we're already on, a, on, on a local TV channels. So what, what do you reckon that next year holds for us? Well, we're on local TV channels, but more and more people are actually watching programs like ours on their computers, on iPads and PCs and so on. And they're watching when they want to watch and not when it's been scheduled in and I think that works for us. And it is true if you look at the likes of the satellite channels that are out there at the moment and the way that broadband and that delivery is all changing the way that we do access our TV. We've probably quite a few of you for Christmas will be getting things like Google Sticks and Chromecast and, and Amazon Cast or whatever it's called but all of those are going to change the landscape of delivery of television and, and I think that, that 
businesses like ours and programs like ours hopefully will be able to help businesses to really get a tune and to get it under their skin so that they too are maximizing the return from using programs like this yes yes you're absolutely right listen thank you very much indeed you have a very merry christmas thank you very much i'll, I'll be out for that in just a few moments time Cheers. and a very merry christmas listen we hope you've enjoyed today's program it's been an absolute fascinating insight i tell you what jim if you would while i while i rattle away here for a few moments if you could spin around and just do one last walk out there uh, with our audience no, no, don't follow me you just go on your own it's purely solo so just looking at all the different people even take Jim's camera if we can go on there we go just uh, just going out there so uh, and if he if you can do it, get it in focus it'd be good as well Jim if you don't mind thank you very much the soft focus uh, Vanessa there we've got Louise Punter we've got Antonio Falco Phil Skinner uh, Kate Cook uh, we've got all the team there we've got uh, Chelsea Baker Steve uh, they're all there and um, I'm telling you what I am going to do I'm just going to walk out and I'm just going to I'm going to shout very loud at them but how long have we got left to go one minute left to go so then I'll just move out here I'm going to hold the microphone away ladies and gentlemen please on the count of three if you could just wish all our viewers a very Merry Christmas so Merry Christmas count of three it's gone very quiet one two three Merry Christmas and a round of applause Fantastic. So there we go. A fantastic opportunity and a fantastic Christmas. Don't go quiet. Start talking again. It'll sound, it'll sound, very, it'll sound very strange. Uh, okay, listen, thank you very much indeed for watching us today. We hope you do have an absolutely fantastic Christmas, a superb Christmas, in fact, and a very happy and prosperous New Year. And I do hope uh, that whatever your business does, that it's going to be absolutely sensational for you. From all the team here at Business Connections Live, have a very Merry Christmas and a very happy, prosperous and successful 2016. Bye for now. Bye-bye. So there we go. That's the program. And uh, thank you very much. I'll tell you what, let's just roll the titles. The, the, the game is done. Take it away.